My name is Dirk van Ertem. I'm a professor at the University of Leuven in Belgium and I'm also the director of the Energy Transmission Competence Hub that we recently started. Uh, my main research is uh, well, big transmission systems, how to develop the system of 2050 in which uh, high voltage direct current is going to be a, a key player. Well, I'm basically interested in any uh, extension of the, uh, of the grid towards a, a future power system. and. Um, uh, at the same time, I'm also within IEEE the, uh, the chair of the HVDC and FACT subcommittee. And um, within Europe, I'm uh, trying to coordinate the R&D roadmap uh, for HVDC technologies within, within the SAP plan. So, so our research is really focusing on, okay, we need to go to 2050 and we all know that with climate change, but also with the new tools that are available, we really see a massive change in the in the power system. Um, offshore uh, grids, electrical vehicles, um, and at the same time we see new technologies coming up. And, and in the past it was okay to do lots of simulations and, and say okay, it's fine, we have plenty of margin in the system. But today we see a tendency to move closer to the limits and also to get a lot of very complicated equipment into a system, which in the past was a little bit simpler. And we, we, we figured out that, well, we're, we're not happy with just accepting the simulations. I mean, it's good to a certain stage, but at some point in time, you need to do a little bit more to be sure. Uh, of course, you're sure if you put it in a system, but that's vastly expensive. So there is an intermediate stage, and that's why we, we now move actually validating quite a bit of our research using real-time simulation. So two, I think, interesting uh, use cases for, for the technology have been, the first one was, we're doing a lot of research on, on DC grid protection. I mean, um, okay, if you build a DC grid, you need to select the element in the, in the system uh, that is uh, faulted and you need to disconnect it. For the selection, you need the relay, and the relay needs to make sure, okay, one, is it a fault? And if it's a fault, is it one that it's mine to take care of, or is it someone else's? Um, so we have developed some algorithms, and afterwards we developed, and together with, uh, with other institutes, with KDH in, in Sweden, a relay where these algorithms were implemented, and then we had to test, does this really actually do what it should do? And for that, we use a real-time uh, digital simulator to run the different profiles and try to figure out whether the device that we made actually was fit for purpose, whether it met the functional requirements. And that was, as far as we know, the first um, DC relay that was developed. And afterwards, we tested uh, a next generation of, of technology with Mitsubishi Electric, who also developed a DC uh, relay under similar uh, functional specs. And they brought the device to us and we tested uh, that relay as well was also matching uh, the requirements and afterwards we did a bigger system test at, at a different location uh, with also the uh, hardware replicas from the HVDC system. So we really went through the full chain of validation of the technology over time. Uh, and the second um, uh, project that I believe is interesting from a different perspective, the previous one was very much on the research, is one where we did uh, digital substations uh, testing. So we had, the, the rumor was that digital substations are the best thing ever, uh, but if you look at it, very few system opera operators actually implemented it because they considered it to be a bit risky because they didn't really know how it worked, and also interoperability was claimed but not guaranteed. So, so what we actually did is we built a setup with different vendors next to each other, and we brought vendors and users together to try to get the system to work and initially it was not as interoperable as one would have hoped it was not plug and play but what we found out by using it and having an environment which was accessible to multiple or we could go into discussion and where no loads were disconnected or whatever <laughs> if something didn't work we actually had an environment of discussion and openness to come to let's say um, guidelines on how to get to interoperability with different vendors next to each other, which was found to be very interesting both from the, the user side, who now say, okay, it's possible, we can do it, but also from the vendor side who 
typically we're not testing with someone else's equipment. So that was an interesting environment, but it's a safe testing environment for, for research, but also for industry.